Uh, everybody please uh, rise or we'll uh, start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. There's this flag right behind us here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, you can take a seat. Welcome to the Senior Center, everybody, for uh, Hopkins and Veterans Day ceremony. My name is Mike Whalen. I'm the adjutant of American Legion Post 202 here in Hopkinton. Seated here is uh, our commander, Eric Sonnet. We're going to start off with a, uh, a poem called Thank a Veteran, and uh, here to recite it is uh, Brianna Malou. Today is the day we honor the noble and the brave, the men and women who dedicated their lives and the sacrifices that they have made. When America had an urgent need, they were the first to raise their hand. Without thinking twice about it, they were proud to take a stand. Some came back from war with battle scars, others in flag-draped coffins. Even though their flesh may have left, their spirits will never be forgotten. They unselfishly and knowingly put their lives on the line. So when you see a veteran, thank them, because without them, freedom would have died. Let's go. Following that, uh, Ryan Brennan is here to recite our standby uh, Veterans Day poem uh, in Flanders Field. In Flanders Field by John McRae, May 1915. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. Mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead in short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders Fields. That's right. Moving up the ladder, uh, Sophie Schneider is here, and she has written some words she'd like us to hear. Sophie. Hello, my name is Sophie Schneider, and I'm a sophomore at Hoppington High School. And I would like to thank Adjutant Whalen for this opportunity to speak before you all today. When you Google Veterans Day, the date November 11th is the first result. This is a day where people can take the time to remember those who have served in the protection of our rights and freedoms for this great country. But for so many, the ideals of Veterans Day do not conform to one single day. For so many, Veterans Day is every day. A day does not pass when they forget the haunting memories of war or the sacrifice of their years. These are the kind of memories that cannot be forgotten. Yet once a year, on November 11th, Americans attempt to put themselves in veterans' shoes and to empathize. We want so desperately to remove any painful memories, but unfortunately, the past cannot be changed. The pain you have suffered and the sacrifices you have made have not gone unnoticed. And for that, I would like to thank you for your service. Without our veterans, we would not have the good fortune to call America the land of the free. It is because of them we live not in free, <coughs> fear, but in freedom. Thank you for your service you have given us. You've given us something we cannot <coughs> repay. So we say to you today that we see you and recognize your humanity. Not having experienced war myself, I can never fully understand the hardships of those who have served. It can sometimes be hard and awkward to think a veteran because I'm never sure if I've said too little or too much. Words can never fully capture the <coughs> gratitude I have as well as many Americans for those who have vowed to protect our country. With the help of writer Mac Kathy Maxwell, I would, like to accept, I would like to attempt to express our thankfulness. Thank you for stepping forward when others have stepped back. <coughs> Thank you for placing yourself between, danger, between us and danger. 
Thank you for delaying plans of, for college, marriage, and other opportunities, and choosing to serve. Thank you for braving the unspeakable horrors of war. Thank you for sacrificing time with your families and missing those significant milestones the rest of us take for granted. Thank you to your <coughs> spouses who find themselves living nomadic lives, often far away from support of loved ones. Thank you to your children who accept your absence as a way of life and understand they share you with the nation and sometimes the world. Thank you for continuing to support your country once you leave military service by following new careers and becoming the teachers, clergy, business owners, employees, pilots, civil servants, and so much more we need to be a successful society. Thank you for involving yourself in your local community, your state, your country, helping us to solve problems and to create a vision for the future using the skills you've learned during your tour of duty. Thank you for being the conscience of our nation. Thank you for serving as a heroic example of who we are and what we can dream to be. Thank you for your service. Kobe. Uh, next, carrying on a tradition that she started all by herself to recognize uh, Hopkinton veterans from uh, World War II, Mary Harrington. During World War II, Hopkinton lost 12 of its brave men. And what I've been trying to do is to do a biography on each of those people who passed away so that we can bring their sacrifices forward uh, as we celebrate Veterans Day today. The one I've chosen for today is Merton Chenard. Merton was born in 1923 at, in the family home at the corner of Cedar and B Street to Louis and Ruth Chenard. In this neighborhood where he grew up, A, B, C, and Wal Walcott Street was known then and is known now as the Lane. He was a graduate of Hopkinton High School, and he was a hard worker as a young man, raising pigs and having a very large garden. This earned him a scholarship from the 4-H to attend the Stockbridge School in Amherst to study agriculture. As he came from a family of 15, and at that time they were the largest family in Hopkinton, his efforts helped to support and feed his family. He joined the Army Air Force and was a 21-year-old second lieutenant navigator in a B-24 Liberator bomber named Pot of Luck when he was shot down over Germany on September 28, 1944. He was part of the 567th Bomb Squadron and the 389th Bomb Group. Everyone on board bailed out, and later it was learned that Merton might have drowned in the Rhine River. He initially was reported as missing in action. However, after a year, the Army located the body. His father declined the offer to send the body home, stating that it didn't make sense that we'd never know if it was really him. Merton is buried in the American War Cemetery in Margraten, Netherlands. He was posthumously awarded the Air Medal with two oak leaf clusters and the Purple Heart. I am looking to see if there's some of his family here today, but maybe they, they didn't make it. But um, for those of you that have been in Hopkins for a while, one, one of his relatives who would stand out was Mrs. Howe, Lois Howe, who was the home economics teacher uh, at the high school. And uh, his sister, Phyllis Smith, uh, as well as Hank Alessio, contributed the material so that I'm able to present this to you today. It's important that we remember these 12 young men who gave their lives during World War II. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. I'm not going to take some time to uh, talk a little about the, uh, uh, the veterans that passed away since our last uh, Veterans Day in uh, 2014. Walter Lang, 82 years old, U.S. Army. He lived uh, on Winter Street. 
He was a uh, post 202 member, and he worked as a printer at Denison. <coughs> Harry Hamilton, 85 years old, USMC, sergeant in the Marines. He, he worked as a pharmacist and was an avid coin collector. He actually uh, lived in the house that I currently live in, uh, bought it from his daughter. Richard Bergeron, 59 years old, USMC. The construction and foreman in the concrete business, 1973 Hopkins High School grad. Joe Murray, 89 years old, Army Air Corps. He worked at Draper's and then later became a carpenter and enjoyed making furniture for his family. Stephen Gibbons, 50 years old, U.S. Army. He also happened to be a Peace Corps volunteer and an avid outdoorsman. Henry Paradis, 86 years old, United States Navy, worked as a machinist. He loved gardening and baseball. <laughs> Norman Stanley, 96 years old, U.S. Army, former member of the Hopkins Appropriation Committee and also a member of the Hopkinton Police Station Committee when they were uh, designing that building. Edward Nealon, 84, U.S. Army. He taught social studies here at Hopkinton, Korean War vet. Roy Donovan, 90 years old, U.S. Navy. He worked at Roxbury Carpet, a lifelong resident. He leaves a large family here in town. Richard Keogh, 67 years old, U.S. Navy, Vietnam vet, member of the Hopkins Police Auxiliary for 34 years, Boy Scout leader, frequent, frequent participant in our breakfast. Leo Lavoy, 89 years old, U.S. Navy, sales manager for Maxwell House Coffee, belonged to the Lions Club, in the American Legion. Raymond Wallace, 90 years old, U.S. Navy. Worked at General Motors in Framingham and in the Navy he was a member of the Seabees and built airstrips. Harold Boudreau worked at the post office here and he continued to walk many, many years after his retirement. David Beatty, 75 years old, U.S. Army, 1957 grad of Hopkins in High School, Legion member, worked all his life, never retired. Raymond Draw, 85 years old, U.S. Navy, Korean War vet, Legion member, he worked at Fenwell in Ashland, very active in the Senior Center and Legion activities. Frank Woods, 99, U.S. Navy, career in manufacturing, worked well into his 80s for a plastics company. Frederick Cotty, 82 years old, U.S. Army, Korean War vet. It's uh, Eric Cotty's dad, you know, of the uh, Hopkins Water and Sewer Commissioner. In his obituary stated he was three times the Mass State Archery Champ. Unusual. Elizabeth Brunetta, 94 years old, U.S. Army nurse, and then continued to nursing in Framingham Union Hospital. Jeff Palmer, 73 years old, U.S. Navy. He worked, he lived over at the Lehman Lane condos there. And John DiGazzaldi, 89 years old, U.S. Navy. Harvard, 1949, member of the Hopkinton Zoning Board of Appeals. He worked as a sales manager for Navy. To many veterans, our nation was important enough to endure long separation from their families, miss births, holidays, and live in harsh conditions, and even lose their lives. What is common throughout all generations of veterans is the absolute insistence 
that the gratitude shown them truly belongs to their fallen brothers and sisters who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Ironically, it is those who did give their lives, never wore the title of veteran. Only survivors become veterans. Some died on foreign soil and gave up their chance to be fathers, mothers, and grandparents. They gave up everything for their country, and all we can do is remember. But just to remember seems inadequate. Hence, we created Veterans Day, a day in which we can actively express our gratitude. Today our battles are not just with enemies of our nation, but the enemies of all the good people of this earth. This country's military is combating evil in every corner of the planet. Yes, evil or the devil or whatever name you give to it must exist. It is really the only explanation for the atrocities and crimes against humanity that we can all view in this modern era because of technology. <laughs> History has shown us that isolationism and inaction to these inhuman offenses is a mistake. The leaders of our country should realize that with all our resources, we have a moral obligation to take up the mantle and defend all the innocent and just people of this earth from the misguided zealots. I believe that this country's young men and women are certainly ready to defend our way of life and freedoms that we enjoy as the generations that came before them did. Remember, this nation will remain the land of the free as long as it is the home of the brave.